for probably valued around eight to nine billion dollars. But we're going to move on. So this past weekend, WrestleMania weekend, WrestleMania 39, obviously we had Hall of Fame. We had Stand and Deliver, WrestleMania Saturday and Sunday and Raw after Mania. So much happened. So little time. I wanted to know some of your standout moments, some of your low light moments. Why or why not? And we let's talk about just overall WrestleMania 39 weekend impressions. Okay, I know we're pressed for time, so I'm sure my answer. I actually thought that night two was going to be better than night one, and it mm-hmm. actually ended up being the other way around for me. Um, not just because of the main event flopping, and for me personally, like I thought that the match was amazing. But I just felt like it was a letdown and it was not the win. But we're going to get to that. We're going to get into a debate because me and Jordan was getting into it in the group chat. Okay. But we're going to get back to that. So just, just fucking pin that. Pin that in your head. Going back. Okay. I felt like night one came out better than night two. And the match that to me was booked perfectly that actually impressed me was top to bottom left to write something that like I thought was an actual WrestleMania feeling moment. Has to go to Charlotte Flair versus Rhea Ripley. I know that Angie touched on it. That match was good. And y'all, I don't compliment Charlotte Flair at all. I don't like the bitch. I don't like her. However, that match was amazing to the point where, like, I didn't, I'm always on my phone. I'm always on my phone. My phone was down and I was locked in. I was locked in because I was just so amazed at Rhea and Charlotte's chemistry. I did not think they were going to top their their first WrestleMania match. I did not think that at all. But to me, they just blew me away, and it just felt like they were like wrestling soulmates. It felt like it was a hard hitting, heavy match. Those two wrestled like dudes. I'm not going front. Like it felt like watching one of the men go at it, which I love it when women wrestle like men. You know, might get some backlash for that for whatever reason. But I love it when the females just fight like like dudes. I love it. I, I the passion was in their eyes. The chemistry was there. The ending was phenomenal. You could see in Rhea's face like when she won. Like yo, like I I really am doing this shit. And I think she's a Grand Slam champion right now. Which hats off to her. Like congratulations. Like she's amazing. But the part obviously that I love the most is that I would never I would never have thought I seen the day that Charlotte Flair gives back to the women's division. And there was a camera cut. And I know that the cameraman did that on purpose where she was leaning by the ringside and you got that angle of uh, Rhea holding her belt and Charlotte's just smirking, kind of like reminiscent to Bianca Belair versus Sasha, you know, where they got that that cut of Sasha just leaning the back to smiling because she she's always given back, of course, of course. But it was just like a historical moment for two Black women. In this instant, it was just a historical moment just because Rhea Ripley is really young. If I'm not mistaken, she's 25, 26 years old, and she's already a Grand Slam champion, and she took out like the one of the big, well, now the biggest four horse woman, because Sasha's not here anymore, obviously. Right. But that's what she's doing, you know? Like, that is insane. And I just, you, you just saw the look in Charlotte's eyes that she was just, like, so proud to give Rhea her flowers. And it made me appreciate Charlotte a little bit more because that's all I've been asking for her the entire time. Just, I'm fine with you being entitled. Can you at least use your entitlement to help others? And she finally, after all these years, damn near a decade, she did it. She did it. So I'm proud of her. That's growth for her. She may possibly have a fan in me. I don't know yet because she might piss me off later because she might just take the belt off of Rhea. But hats off to her. Amazing match. I might actually go back and watch it. So that was the match for me that made the night. I can't remember if um I can't remember if Eddie and um not Eddie, what the fuck? Eddie was not here. Eddie, Eddie's up there, first of all. Um <laughs> when Ray went against his and son Dominic. Dominic. Yeah. That that match was actually really fun for me. I didn't know what to expect out of it. I knew that there was going to be some homage to Eddie. And I was actually expecting for, for Dominic to actually pull the lowrider gimmick. I expected that because he already had the mullet going. He's already standing next to Rhea, which is reminiscent of Eddie and China. And, you know, they they let Ray do it. And I didn't even think about that. I didn't even think that that would, that, that would be more brilliant. That he just came out. As soon as he came out... With Latino heat, bitch. I was on the floor. Listen to me on the floor. <laughs> screaming and kicking on the carpet like a child. <laughs> that popped me. I have not seen a lowrider in so long. It's so long. That entrance was everything. Everything. I loved it. 
Dominic's entrance though was so dramatic, child. I could, I really couldn't. Like <laughs> that entrance, I couldn't deal with. I could not deal with it because he like went to juvie or whatever the fuck for like a day, but they made it seem like he went through hell. <laughs> like he was in the pen. Yeah, <laughs> like I'm like he was there for like 24 hours. What do you mean? But his entrance was still fire. It was fire. The match itself was fun. There was obviously, like, you know, some Eddie moments. But, you know, you got to see, like, Dominic actually, like, hold himself, like, you know, like l- like a man. Because I feel like for the longest, it just feels like he's a kid. I feel like my brain yeah. can't unsee the, the small child watching two Mexicans climb up a ladder for a custody paper. But, like... <laughs> I love the match. I love their chemistry. I was surprised they actually put Ray over. That was the only like question mark. I was just like, usually like they, usually like the legend when they're growing out, they do the job. I was surprised that they put Ray out on top, which goes to show you how much WWE appreciates and loves Ray. Night two was a hot mess. Should I pause? <laughs> Should I let you give your takes on night one before we get into night two? Because no, night no, no. two was do a hot two. mess. Do your do your night two? Because I also want you to do talk my about night two. Here. Night two stressed me out, child. Night two was a stressful night for everyone. Um, the first few matches, I'm not gonna lie, they fell flat for me. I didn't really care. Was I think Brock and Omos actually put on a good match, which shocked me because I don't. I'm not a very big fan of Omos, but I never seen Brock Lesnar sell. I never saw him sell before like that. And that that was that was big for me, because uh, Brock is a good worker, but he also is selfish in some aspects. So to see him like sell, sell, honestly, hats off to him. That was actually a great match. That was also the best that Omas ever looked to me. I think it's the only good Omas match in my eyes that I ever watched. Lash me if you will. I don't really care. Um, but moving on to the stressfulness. This whole thing with Shane McMahon. Child. <laughs> this this is the screech. I just <laughs> it was <laughs> it was such like it was so anticlimactic. Yo, he came out and I was so happy. I'm doing the money dance with him. I'm excited to see Shane McMahon do a coast to coast and do like the same three moves he always does with little punch and stuff like that. He was fired up and all that stuff, but him just like <laughs> I think he he messed up his ACL or his knee or something. I don't know. The first thing I thought about, I thought it was was his quad. I thought that he was just like his daddy. I just thought about when Rumble. Vince just, That's the first thing that came to my mind. I'm like, yo, he just like his father. I don't care what the DNA say. <laughs> he just like his father. I had to watch the clip back several times because he really did a leapfrog. A leapfrog took him out. At that point, I, I knew he was on the ground just thinking like, yo, I have to pack it up. Like, <laughs> if a leap, not even a real bump, a leapfrog, a leapfrog had this many incapacitated. And it was awkward. It was so awkward. The Miz didn't know what to do. We as fans didn't know, like, was he just acting really well? And I'm like, that was really dramatic. He didn't actually even take a bump or nothing. He just, he just rolled over and just right. fell. But the funniest part is just <laughs> Jessica Carr yelling at Snoop Dogg <laughs> to hit him, hit him. <laughs> And then Snoop Dogg just comes out of nowhere with this hook <laughs> and just took out the myth. And it was just so, it was just so funny to me. Like, it, it was just as messy as when Vince flopped taking a stunner last year. I was just like, honestly, <laughs> as much of a hot mess that it is, it's a memorable moment that no one's going to forget about. Like, I felt like it was a beautiful mistake. I obviously don't want to see Shane McMahon after that. He probably doesn't want to wrestle at any time after that. But, yo, that shit had me weak, weak. But the fuckery didn't stop there. It did not stop there because Finn and Edge came out. And Edge came out, like, in this Party City costume mask thing. What was he going for? What was he going for? Funny thing is, it looked it looked better in person than it did. Did it really? Because yeah. I don't, that looks so cheap. But that looks I- so cheap. But keep going, keep going, keep going. Not, it was just a hot mess. I expected, like, better. You know, I expected better if he's going to bring out the, the brew character. But, like, whatever. That was a hot mess. That was a hot mess. Um, I thought the outfit looked it cheap. I'm like, all right, Edge. Like, you know, like, okay, it is what it is. But poor Finn Balor. Poor Finn Balor. The man took a bump from a ladder 
I, I don't know what happened there. I'm not sure if Finn just wasn't ready to take the bump. I don't know if he expected a ladder to come at him, but that match <laughs> suffered from that. Um, and, and, it's, and it's upsetting to me just because that was one of the matches that I actually look forward to because Finn came out looking amazing and I love the way that the demon character looked and I was expecting just so much more, but sadly enough, Finn took a very nasty bump from a ladder being thrown at him. His head was busted wide open. There was blood leaking everywhere, like everywhere to the point where, yeah, like they had to do mini surgery on a demon, which took me out the whole match. Cause I'm just like, all right, I know he had to be attended to, but at that point, like you're a demon, <laughs> right? like right. nursing a demon. Like that, that was just like, yo, this match, you can't save it. You, I'm not, you can't save it after this. But even then, so I'm like, all right, the demon probably has to go over because why would you bring in Finn Balor in his most elite form, a form right. that we re- we rarely see him in, right. you know? Like, Edge's character does not add up to the to the demon. So the part that took me out even more than that, outside, outside of the fact that Edge does not know how to call an audible because this man went down and then all Edge started doing was awkwardly putting up furniture in the back. I'm like, what are you doing? Why are you putting up a ladder and setting up a table? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> It was so awkward. I'm like, why does Snoop Dogg know what to do? But you over here just putting up furniture not knowing what to do, child. That stressed me out. That pissed me off, though. The ending of the match pissed me off because there's no reason why, absolutely zero reason why, someone whose contract's about to expire within the year is going to build a faction and then basically behead the faction by taking out Finn. Not just even regular Finn, but elite Finn because... At that point, now we have two mystical characters that don't nobody care to see anymore. I don't care to see the fiend. Don't nobody else care to see the fiend. And I think after that, don't nobody want to see the demon because you got beat up by Edge, of, of an old veteran. Like, mm-hmm. how do you create a faction just to destroy the faction, knowing you're going to leave? And knowing that the other person, one of the other people in the faction, Rhea, got the belt, it would make more sense that Finn went over. Or am I missing something? I know Dominic lost. We could get over that. But Finn should have won. And there's no other way you could argue with that. And I'm an Edge fan. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people expect me to pop, to be jumping out of my seat. I was pissed. I was pissed. I'm mad at Edge. Okay? He's sleeping on the couch tonight. He's still sleeping on the couch since Sunday. No. Not okay with that. Not okay with that. I actually want to pause right here because we're going to argue over the main event. So I want Jordan to give me his rundown first. All right, so boom. I'm going to start with night one. I agree with you. Rhea versus Charlotte was definitely one of my favorite matches on the card. Definitely Mm -hmm. super passionate and super intense. Um, Funny part is I kind of share the same sentiment as you as far as like Charlotte being selfish because she didn't give back or she didn't put somebody over. But it's kind of the same thing as Brock Lesnar's selling case, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen so much that when it does happen, it's value that much more so i can i I don't even think it's a matter of charlotte being selfish i think charlotte was being picky and because she's being picky whoever she decides to put over at that rate is it's it's going to be way more valuable than it would have years ago with whomever you know what i'm saying so i i i I didn't mind charlotte being picky because when raya won it felt important it felt like a big deal it felt like a legit redemption story so then that's one so funny thing about the ray dominic match right do you remember the last time that that uh that ray was in a low rider with eddie at a wwe pay-per-view i don't know which pay-per-view but i know he definitely was in the low rider before wrestlemania 21 in los angeles so oh. the whole entrance was, I believe, I think the entrance was a callback. So the fact I that he was able that. to do that. So the fact that he was able to do that. And WrestleMania 21, I think, if I'm not mistaken, they were they were the tag team champions at the time. And I think it was Eddie versus versus Ray. It was That's Eddie crazy. versus Ray. So the fact that he was able to come out to uh Come out with Snoop in the low rider it was a great callback to that moment. Um, so I, 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 I really, 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 really like that. Now, night two was interesting for me because I was there in person. And it was very interesting kind of seeing the run of the show and how it was happening because 
there were actually a couple moments. There were actually a couple matches, in my opinion, that actually surprised me. Obviously, Brock Lesnar versus Omos was one. Brock selling was 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 great, and I was surprised. But I was like, wait a minute. Now I know why he didn't sell for a lot of people, because it wasn't believable. I can believe that a 400-pound man like Omos can throw around somebody like Brock Lesnar, because he's a physically larger person than him. I don't think that would have worked with Finn Balor. I don't think that would have worked with AJ Styles. I don't think that that would have worked with a couple of other people. So it kind of made sense in that, right? Um, In addition to that, another match that got my attention, the triple threat match for the Intercontinental Championship. That was a banger. That was a banger. I forgot about that. Go ahead. And it was even better in person. Um, I thought that they did a really good job telling the story and it felt like it was a Drew Sheamus match featuring Gunter, but I felt like that played into Gunter's character better because it was, he could just pick up the scraps get the win, still retain his title, um, while giving Drew and Sheamus a worthy WrestleMania spotlight. So then there was that, um, another match from night two that sent me for a loop, I guess was the edge Finn Balor match. I don't want to say that I was mad at it. I think that there were a lot of things that kind of detoured the momentum of the match that I felt like altered it drastically. Obviously, the ladder being thrown at Finn's head being one of them. Because there was a point in time he threw the ladder, Finn went down, and I just remember because I was in like the 300 section, I remember just Finn went down and then he like picked his head up and then there was just a pool of blood. And I was just like, oh, he's leaking. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, wait a minute. Is he like, did he blade or like, did it come from his head or, and then I was just like, then I saw the medical staff come by and I was like, oh, this is, this is real. And then when I saw the injury later, cause he needed 14 staples to the head. I was just like, God, dang. So good spot. There were also a couple other good spots that I thought were really, really cool. Um, that actually should have gone through, in my opinion. One of them being the double stomp from the cage. As you just, he should have just taken that. But yes, yes, and it should have finished there. That should have just, that should have been the end. But you know, it is what it is. Um, but that match wasn't necessarily. I, I, I liked it. Like I enjoyed it. Brood Edge to me, that entrance in person was so tough. It looked so good. Um, So I'm very, very surprised that it didn't translate well over camera. But sometimes it's just how the game goes. But 